Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you to today's leadership lecture, uh, Building a Career, a Trapeze Act. Uh, our speaker for today is Shri Ajay Tandon. Shri Ajay Tandon has worked as MD and CEO of Tata Autocom Systems since September 2013. Uh, Tata Autocom System has 12 businesses spread out in manufacturing, engineering, and supply chain, seven joint ventures, 31 plants, including two in China, and one engineering center. Uh, his main responsibility is PNL reporting to the TACO board. Uh, looking back at his glorious career, Shri Ajay Tandon, after his studies in 1981, uh, gained multi-product and multi-location exposure with Godard and Boyce. Uh, in sales and after sales from November 1981 till June 1983, and in products from uh, May, May 1985 till January 1992. Uh, between 1992 and 2000, he has worked as VP product, Projects, VP Sales and Materials, uh, General Manager Manufacturing with Godrej GE Appliances Limited a joint venture of Godrej and General Electric of USA. Then he worked as Vice President Purchase and Supply with General Motors India, uh, a worldwide GM executive and a director on the GM board India for a period of six years from April 2000 till November 2006. From December 2006 till March 2008, he was a CEO for TJC, a joint venture between Tata Autocom Systems and Johnson Controls, a Fortune 500 company. TJC is a company having a turnover of over 520 crores, 1,230 people, seven plants, and one engineering center, which has more than 350 engineers working there. After two years, in April 2008, he became a president of a group of companies in Tata Autocom Systems. He continued his work as president till August 2013. I now invite Sri Tandon to gather the to address the gathering. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, I should thank uh, Professor uh, Nagarajan for inviting me and uh, Suresh for inviting me here. It's almost uh, close to 35 years since I left this institute. Uh, so when uh, Professor asked me to speak, I was wondering what I should speak to you. So I said, I asked the Professor. Uh, do you think uh, it will be good if I talk about my company, uh, what you would like me to speak to, uh, to the students? So then that I, would, I did the next thing, you know, I spoke to a few students uh, who just graduated from IIT recently, uh, last two, three years. My son also just graduated, just three years back from IIT, so I asked him, uh, did, did you get speakers? He graduated from IIT Kharagpur. So I said, did you get speakers? Uh, he said, yes. And he says, uh, what did they speak? So he gave me some ideas. So I said, what would the students like to hear? And almost all the younger crowd told me that it would be career. So they would like to know what to do with their career. So I said, uh, so, you know, I'll frame my talk around it. Now, having said that, I will go to a study which was done way, way back. It's called the Grant Study. If you Google, uh, you will see the study. It is a study which was done on uh, close to 268 Harvard undergraduates. And this was done by psychiatrists, the study. Every two years, they would check uh, with these students. Uh, about, you know, how they were doing, what made them successful. And they would log it. And believe it or not, they did it for 75 years, which means they tracked all the 268 students till death. Because presumably most of them would have died by the time they were 90 or so. And they tried to find out what made them so successful, or if people were successful, what was it uh, which made the difference? And more than $20 million was spent on it, huge amount of money, huge, huge, huge amount of money. And what I'm going to show you is the findings of that study. First is, above a certain level, intelligence does not matter. Second is, adaptability is a key success factor. Then they, 
found a few attributes of the people who came out as being happy towards the end of their career. And what they found was, these people, no smoking, less use of alcohol, uh, regular exercise, maintained their weight, they did not bloat up, stable marriage and networking. So, they found this. And the last one is warmth of relationship, be it with their friends, be it with their colleagues, be it with their family members. So, this was the study finding. And if you ever go to do a Google search, you can get the full study and all the results are there. The reason I put this up was, what I am going to tell you sort of links with this. I have a set of experiences, I am going to share those experiences with you and towards the end we will come back to this finding and you will see the experience are not so different. There might be some differences, but not so different. First thing I will advise you is do not think, take things for granted. Most intelligent people are lazy people. When God gave them intelligence, he says, Tathastu, I am giving you laziness as well. Because you tend to say, last minute I can do anything. I can get up, finish it off. So, with intelligence, God gave you a virtue of laziness. So, when I joined the institute, you know, I joined in Alaknanda, you know, room number 104, very close to the common room. Anyone who would go say, Ajay, like to play carom? Yeah, 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 I like to play carom. You want to play chess? Yes, yes, I can play chess. You want to play table tennis? I can play table tennis. The whole year went by. At the end of the year, on absolute grading, I got some 69.6 percent. And then a funny thing happened. One colleague walked up to me and said, Ajay, you know, I was sort of 10, 15 ranks behind you and I got 73 percent marks. That is what he told me. It went, the arrow went through my heart. I said, now when I go to the next hostel and that was Godavari, that time you had a first year and then second year you went, you went to a different hostel. Godavari, I take the room which is farthest away from the common room. Second, I will sit with a mother gang. I will make it. Now it is not going to be that, like that. You know, you can't take it for granted. And those days, you would get a distinction if you got 80 percent absolute grading. And the things were stacked against me because first year you got 69.6, so you had to get very high numbers in the rest of the five, four, you know, four years because that time it was a five-year course. Last year I got 85.2 something. And I just sort of jumped across that 80 barrier at 80.01 or 2 and I got a distinction. What I am telling you is, intelligence, all of you are gifted, otherwise you can't be in this institute. But one thing, please take care of what God said, Tathastu, I am giving you laziness as well. That only you can counter, no one else can counter. And when you will go to the working life, you will realize people want things done in time. They want it done before time. They want to be sure that it is going to happen. They want certainty. And that makes a difference. Your schooling, your college, all professors taught us only one thing. There is only one right answer. 2 plus 2 is 4. It is not 4 and a half. That is what our schooling taught us. That is what our college taught us. But moment you get on to the professional life, there is more than one right answer. And for heaven's sake, please do not ignore other answers which may come to you which may not seem to be the right answer. Like when I got out of uh, college, I thought I am a very good engineer. It was my belief. 
and I wanted to do only engineering work. And as life would have it, my father expired in my last year. I had to quickly go to the hometown because I had two small sisters. My mother was in very bad shape. In my hometown, there was nothing, which is Kanpur. It's a dead city. You know, I got a job in after sales. I had three other jobs, but they were in Pune, Bombay, Calcutta. But when I saw my mother weep, I said, to hell with all this. I lost my father. I can't lose one more. So look for a job, took it in Kanpur, in after sales. Not a natural choice. But today when I look at back, not a wrong answer either. So life will throw multiple things at you. Try and understand that there are more than one right answer. This is a story which I want to tell you. It's about a professor. Uh, he had taught the students everything. And towards the end, he brought a jar and kept it on the table. Have you all heard this story? Okay. You all heard it? Okay. So for those who have not, kept the jar, put lot of golf balls, and he asked the student, is that full? They said, yes. Put pebbles, said full, they said, yes. Put some more sand, said, yes. And then put some beer as well, till it was to the brim. But there is a sequence in which he did it. Let us presume the sequence was different. The golf balls would not have gone in. And one thing I have learnt in life, there are certain things very dear to you. Don't miss them. Don't lose them. Your family, your friends, you know, they are very dear to you. And don't sacrifice them for things which are more materialistic. When I was, uh, you know, I think it was 2000, uh, a person uh, contacted me and says, Ajay, I want you to become a CEO of my company. And the product he was making was nowhere close to anything which I have done before. And I said, no way I am doing it. I have no clue about what you are talking about. I have no clue about the industry. I have no clue about the product. He said, no, no, Ajay, you can do it. I said, I, I understand your anxiety. I know that I can do it. But I do not understand what, you, what your product is all about. I have no skill sets. But he would not give up. So he said, oh, why don't you meet my friend uh, and have dinner with him. So that day, I, then I said, okay, let me have dinner with him, with his friend. So I had dinner with his friend. He happened to be a psychiatrist. This is the first time and the last time I ever met a psychiatrist. I never met a psychiatrist in my life. Okay. And he asked me a question. He says, Ajay, do you have a safety net? And I don't know what came into my head. I had not heard the jar story like some of you have. Okay, before that. I said, it's my family. See, we are like trapeze artists. We do all the actions. We fly here, fly there. There's a crowd cheering you on. There's a boss sitting out there who's giving you more and more difficult tasks. There are colleagues who are doing the trapeze act with you. And one day, you will fall. Everyone falls. I'm sure I will fall unless I am damn, damn lucky. But one day, I know, with the expectations being higher, with the targets being higher, I am going to fall. At that time, I will need the safety net. Because if there is a safety net, I will get up and perform my act again. But if the safety net is not there, I will break my bones and there will be no tomorrow. Find your safety net. It can be various things. In my case, it happened to be the family. And I am very, very happy. Uh, there are a lot of constraints, a lot of options which got closed out by chance. But I am happy. Because my safety net is intact. Now, this is another lesson which uh, I did not learn early in life. And I want you to learn it. See, the institute gives you two things. 
it gives you knowledge we take that knowledge all of us take that knowledge and go away but it gives you one more thing it gives you a network most of us forget it i forgot it i forgot it for 30 years of my life more than 30 years that there was a network which the institute provided because after iit i, I went uh, to do my i am uh, for my ahmedabad uh, and we had just a 30 year you know meet and we, we were meeting with the family and people called me and said, Ajay, why don't you join? So I went. My son and daughter, like I told you, my son just graduated from IIT three years back. My daughter, she's a dentist. Both of them uh, were in a critical stage. You know, they had exams, various things going on. I said, nothing doing. Just leave everything. You come with me. You see what networking is. It is so important. My son said, Dad, exam. I said, forget the exam. What you are going to learn today is what your dad did not learn for 30 years. So my request to all of you is, this institute will definitely take all the knowledge. But don't forget the network. It gives you a huge platform. It gives you a huge alumni network. It's a huge contact. Learn how to live in that network. When you will go into corporate life, one thing you will get a feeling, no one is watching. I also got that feeling. No one is watching. But later, when I became the youngest vice president in that company, which was Godrej, a lot of people said, Ajay, we knew you were bright. We knew that you, know, you were good. I said, you are watching me? You had so much free time? And I was laughing at them, saying, boss, you are senior, you don't have a job, you don't have a job, you don't have a job, you don't have a job. They said, that's it. People watch you. And why it becomes even more important is, God forbid, suppose two of you join, one has to supersede the other. Superseding, moment you supersede and you become that person's boss. Equations begin to change dramatically. Just imagine, you go to the next high level, you become your boss's boss. Equations become to change even more rapidly. How do you garner the respect of the people? The only way you garner that respect is by doing the right thing from day one. In my case, I can tell you, I became my boss's boss in four years. Not easy. And my the seniors asked the question. They called me. He said, Ajay, would you be comfortable doing it? I said, absolutely comfortable. I have done nothing wrong. Right from the day one. I have all the respect of everyone I have worked with. Absolutely not an issue. So, right from the day one in corporate life, don't make that mistake. No one is watching you and you start doing things which are naughty, okay? When you get into corporate life, the first thing you will get is KRS. You need to achieve one, two, three things, boom, 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 boom. If you achieve it, you get incentives. You exceed those, you get more incentives. And what do we do? While trying to achieve all of that, we run over people. We show bad attitudes. We don't care about people. Don't forget. And this people, you will learn it later. Attitude is more important than your KRA. At first glance, it will look as if KRA is more important than the attitude. But as you will grow, you will realize Attitude is more important than your care. Do it the right way. Even if you have to say something to someone, be careful that you don't make him feel small or insult him. You can be tough, but you don't have to be abrasive. You have to learn those skill sets. 
The other thing in corporate life you will say is, do I become a manufacturing guy, do I become an R&D specialist, do I go through the finance route, do I go through the marketing route, trust me, trust me, whichever route you take, as long as you are in the top 10% of that particular skill set, you will learn as much. Just excel in what you do, just keep your focus, say okay, I have been lucky to get manufacturing, I am going to become one of the best manufacturing guys. Or you become a marketing guy, I will become the best marketing guy India has ever had. Go with that attitude, you will do extremely, extremely well. The other thing is, do whatever you do with creativity. I will tell you my story. You know, I joined as a after sales guy, went to do my management for my Ahmedabad, came back, joined as a marketing guy, spent another five years and that year my branch had earned all the awards, all, all, all. I had a ambassador car and the dicky was full with trophies and that is when I said, I am leaving. Someone was calling me saying, Ajay, you join my company, I will give you blah, 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 blah. So, I took a call and I said, I am putting in my papers. I put in my papers and the next thing I knew was, group office, HR was calling. He said, Ajay, do not do anything funny, I am coming. So, the group HR had came down and he asked, Ajay, how can we retain you? And I, I wanted to go. So, I said, let us ask something so stupid, so stupid. This guy will say no and I will leave and he will not feel bad about it. And he said, okay, yaar. Bekuf aadmi hai, isko akkal nahi hai, jana ko isko. So, I told him, I want to do manufacturing. Can you give me a head of manufacturing? Zero days experience in manufacturing. I told him, make me the manufacturing head of your company. He looked at me for two minutes. And he said, yes. Just a bolte na aap log, pad gai. I had no clue what the hell hit me. But then I was stuck. And I said, okay. But I told him, you give me the head, manufacturing head of your largest plant. So, he said, done. Okay. So, I, I reached there as head of the manufacturing, you know, that got more than 1000 odd people in manufacturing. Every department head has 10, 15 years experience or 20 years experience. Everyone has been eyeing the plant head job for years. Now, here comes a stranger, zero years of experience, jumping into that job. No one wants to teach you. Let him fail. This got to fail. Okay. Everyone is looking at you with that eye. Now, what do you do? So, first thing I went there and how do you make people teach you? So, you know what I did for the next 15 days? I would go into the plant and say, and it is a pretty old plant. It is about close to about 100 years old. I would say, this equipment, he says, I want to throw it out. They say, nah, nah, sir, isko, how can you throw this out? I said, why I can't throw it out? He said, no, no, sir, uh, this guy history, geography, ye hai, and he would explain the full thing. Then I will go to the next equipment and say, I want to throw this one out. I want to throw these bloody five tools out. These tools I do not see moving, I want to throw it out. End result was, in 15 days, they taught me everything. Everything I would say, I want to disturb, they will tell me why not to disturb. And to explain why not to disturb, they will tell me the last 15 years history. Two things happened. I could clear up the plant, about 25 percent of the space I could clear up, because for 25 percent they did not have a strong logic. The remaining 75 they had a very strong logic. And for that 75 percent they taught me all the history geography of 15 years. I did not know, need more teaching than that. Whatever you do, you enjoy. Uh, when I went to, I am, okay, my, my batchmate was Harsha Bogle. You see him comment, making, doing the commentary, he was my batchmate. And we would play the dom cricket, you know. 
एंड हम लोग बोला यार हमको तो बल्ला दो यार बैटिंग करेंगे बोलिंग बोलिंग तो यू नो लो डाउन पीपल नीड टू डू वी नीड टू डू यू नो बैटिंग सो वी वुड डू द बैटिंग एंड दिस गाय हर्षा विल स्टैंड देर एंड डू कॉमेंट्री ओके एंड मेरी थिंग पागल हो गया बोला सही में सतक गई है इसकी तो दैट वॉज इज लव दैट वॉज इज पैशन यू गिफ्ट ऑफ द गैप एंड टूडे He made a passion into a career. Normally, what do we do? We make a career and then put passion behind it. But if you have a passion and make that a career, nothing like it. He's done fantastically well. He's a celebrity, making tons of money, and probably continue to do it for many, many years because he enjoyed what he was doing. He made that into his career. The other thing which I have learned is your bosses have more problem than they can handle. I call it a juggler theory. You know, they keep juggling. Now, if he's a very good juggler, he can juggle with ten problems. He's an even better juggler, maybe fifteen problems. He's a fantastic juggler, twenty-five problems. But he gained the twenty-sixth. Everything falls down. Second thing, what is happening is his boss is throwing problems at him. Now, the way to position yourself is position yourself close to the boss so that you can take problems from him, close it, hand it back to him. Now you begin to help him with his job. You get very interesting assignments. Bosses love you. And your career starts taking off. Now, when I was in manufacturing, you know, we had a very peculiar structure. Uh, initially, it was not so peculiar, but later it did become peculiar. We had the manufacturing head, and under him was, uh, you know, manufacturing R and D purchase head. He was the big boss of operations. Under him, you had manufacturing head, you had purchase. And you had uh, R and D. The other side, you had another big boss. He was marketing, after sales, and uh, he also had uh, uh, sales, marketing, sales, after sales. And both of them would fight. The marketing guy will say, manufacturing guy doesn't know how to produce. He doesn't know low cost production. And the manufacturing guy will tell the marketing guy, "You don't know how to sell." So one fine day, the owner of the company decided to take purchase away from manufacturing, giving it to the marketing guy. Now, 60% of the cost is in manufacturing, 10% maybe in marketing. So 70% you control. Now go sell. You are craving so much. Do it. And then the panic occurs. Now how? The manufacturing guy says, "Some stupid guy will come and do purchasing and create hell of a problem." The marketing guy was scared that till now every day I was telling how not, you know you should buy low cost, how you should produce low cost. Now I am given the task. So both of them started looking for a person who could fit the bill. Luckily, since I had worked under both of them, they said, "Ajay, you do it." I said, "Please." Please keep me far, far away from both of you. You are like two elephants. Whether you fight or cuddle, the grass is going to get trampled. And I am that grass. I am not going anywhere near you, you, you guys. Okay. Finally, you know they said, no, no, no. Big boss wants to call you, so he called and patched up. But how did I get that job? The reason I got that job was when I was doing manufacturing. I used to spend two hours with the purchase guy, with the materials guy. So what were they doing? This is another advice I have for all of you. No job has been designed for eight hours. Every job you can do in six hours. Two hours is free. It is your inefficiency. You want to do gap shop, you do. But in that two hours, spend with what you think is your next. 
milestone and I knew my next milestone would be purchase. So, I was learning it for two years. So, when this opportunity came, I was the logical owner for that promotion. All of you are brands. You will get a pay for your intrinsic value. You have an intrinsic value, you will get that pay. But there is a pay you will get for your brand because people think you can do it. Whether you have the ability, don't have the ability, forget it. People think this guy can do it. So, your brand has to be protected and you have to do everything to ensure that your brand does not get tarnished. And from day one, the way you move, the way you talk, the way you dress, the way you speak needs to enhance your brand because you will realize later on that you are being paid for a brand which is topping on the intrinsic value and therefore you are getting paid higher. Now, this is my experience which says that if you do not do value addition, which is 10 times your salary, it has to be 10 times your salary. Sooner than later, someone is going to say, do I need you? So, it is very, very important. You have to keep measuring what is your value addition, your personal value addition, not your subordinates value addition. What is your personal value addition? And if it is 10 times what you, you know, what you are uh, getting paid, your job is for sure certain. Career building has to be done very carefully and the first 10 years, see I have seen people who move very, very fast in the first 10 years. Those are his job, made, his third job somewhere else, fourth job somewhere else, fifth job somewhere else and you get a feeling that you are losing out because they are moving fast. But what has happened is, they have not understood this game. Because when you are 50, you will be earning the cumulative of your first 10 years. You add your first 10 years, add that salary. You should be earning in the 50th year that salary. If you have earned even 1 rupee less than your cumulative of your first 10 years, you have definitely destroyed your brand. Definite. If you are earning more, you have definitely added to your brand. And what you will find is when people move very, very fast initially, they destroy the long term value. Success, you know, everyone has KRA, everyone has an external scorecard, but you have an internal scorecard that only you know. It is your value systems. You measure yourself against those value systems and judge how you are doing against those value systems. But each one of us has an internal scorecard and we should respect it. This is what Warren Buffett said, you know, for him success is, you know, when you are old, uh, you know, how many people really loved you? A lot of people have, uh, you know, institutes named after them, you know. You have uh, centers named after them, but how many people like them? None. Go back to my earlier slide, which I said attitude is more important than your care. Care is important, but attitude takes premium over the care. This I would request all of you to do. Again, this is something like I told you, networking for 30 years I did not do. This is the other thing which I will request, find a good mentor. You need, all of us need good mentors. We do not know everything in life. We need good mentors. And the mentor needs to stand by your side, ability to speak the truth and a subject matter expert. He has to have these three qualities. If he has only two, he is not a mentor, he is someone else. Like for example, stand by your side and ability to speak the truth, maybe he is your spouse. Because not, an, not a 
not an expert. Or if he is an expert and ability to speak the truth, he is like an auditor. Or if he is a subject matter expert and stands by your side, maybe he is a champion, your champion. You know, saying, Ari, Ari, Bob, Bari, Abdarkai. But he has to have all three. And identify these mentors early in your career. Again, this is something which I did not realize for 30 years of my life. But for both my children, I tell them, don't forget this, identify your mentors. They will teach you the ropes. This is something which I learned. Your subordinates give you far more than your boss. I am convinced that subordinates give you far more than your boss. If your boss can ever give you. If you take care of your subordinates, you treat them well, you coach them, you guide them, you give them the knowledge, they will do so much for you, so much for you. They will go around the world and tell, this is the best boss I had. You will get fantastic job offers. You, you will be a star. But many times what we, we look only upwards to our boss and forget the subordinates down below. And above all, this country has given us a lot. The institute has given us a lot. Always it's good to pay back in some form or the other. Now having said that, I am going to show you a small clip. It's a clip by one of the Bollywood greats who is singing his father's poetry. And for those of you, I think most of you would follow Hindi, but for those of you who cannot follow Hindi, let me tell you, he is talking about ants which are trying to climb a wall. They slip and fall. He is talking about a diver who dives into the ocean to find pearls, but not every time he finds a pearl. But neither the ant gives up, nor the diver gives up. And like they say, Koshish karne walon ki kabhi vihar nahi hoti. You hear this. You can hear it. Volume, volume. So I am going back to my first slide, so that you can reflect on that study. I have given you some of my experiences, above a certain level, intelligence does not matter, adaptability is a critical factor, there are certain factors which are critical to success and warmth of one relationship has a powerful effect on your health, happiness. Okay? So, thank you very much. Uh, really appreciate it. Appreciate the time given. Hello, sir. I am yes. Sanket from Mechanical Department. 
I wanted to ask you that did you feel any time at the point of your career to start something of your own? Uh, no, I think I have got the mind. Uh, very frankly, uh, uh, we came from a very average family. Uh, sort of risk averse, it is mindset. Uh, frankly, not. Uh, it never occurred to me. And uh, probably I never thought I could do it. Also, maybe played on my mind. But uh, the next generation, like my son, he, you know, he knows uh, he's protected for life. I think I've made enough money. He, even if he does not work, he should be okay. He, he's going to take risk. But like I said, these are also excuses in a way. So I am building my own excuses maybe to you, but my mindset was of uh, not a natural risk taker. So, I am Afnas, so how yeah. do you suggest we get mentors? How do we? What do you suggest? Mentors? Yeah, uh, look around, uh, see speak to people in the industry and look for where you would like, what would you need? What is a certain advice which you will require? And maybe if you speak to your father, your you know uncle, you know, because they are close to you, they will be able to suggest to you. Because they know you extremely well, okay, uh, especially your father. Because personally it is my belief that two people who do not look at you with a colored glass. One, your parents and second, your spouse. Uh, they, uh, pardon? Uh, then you then you probably go to a prof uh, who is an expert and or you go to someone who is from the industry. So like for example, you know someone from the industry, go to him. But he should be genuine in terms of suggesting the right contact for you. But do find good mentors. It, it is very, very important. I for, I did not do it for 30 years. Do not make that mistake. Because after when, you know, 35 years later when you are standing on the podium, you will probably also be regretting that like I am regretting. Thank you all. And I especially thank uh, Sri Ajay Tandon for giving us one awesome and insightful lecture. I'm sure uh, we have loved it. Now I request Dean IAR, Professor Nagarajan, to present Sri Ajay Tanan with a memento. Thank you. Thank you very much. Gold plated leaf from the campus. Ah, okay. Thank you so much. So nice of you.